good morning. Um, today we're going to do exotics. And for the first lecture, it's going to be a very qualitative lecture, very touchy-feely, about what are the different types of interest rate models and what are they good for. Once we go through this, then we'll very carefully take you through a case where you select an interest rate model, select the calibration instruments, and go ahead and price an exotic. Okay, so uh, interest rate modeling. What makes the interest rate modeling fun, much funner than, say, equities, is that for interest rates, you have to model an entire instantaneous forward rate curve. As time advances from zero to t, this curve can do lots of different things. It can go up and down in a parallel shift. It can tilt, flatten. It can flex. Many, many different things that a curve can do as time advances. So if this is so much fun, the first question is, why should we do it? Well, you shouldn't do it to price the vanillas, your caps, floors, and swaptions, because for those, you can get by with a um, Black's formula and a clever smile model. The reason you do it is to price exotics. What's an exotic? Well, it's basically anything you think you can't price using Black's formula and small models. So it's quite circular. Now, in theory, when you want to price an exotic, this is the procedure you go about. First, you take a book of exotics, and then you examine qualitatively what are the risks that this book has. Is it mostly at risk for interest rates going up and down, outright rate risk, or is it at risk for tilts in the curve, like spread risks? Or is it risk for, say, volatilities going up and down? And qualitatively, ask, what are the risks? Once you decide what the sort of risks are qualitatively, the next step is to select an arbitrage-free model that's capable of describing those risks. Well, once you've selected the arbitrage-free model, a model right out of the box is completely useless because it has these things in them called mathematical parameters. Until you, until you set the values of those mathematical parameters, you're not going to be pricing anything. So the next step is the calibration step. Typically, you select a set of vanilla instruments. These are swaptions, caps and floors, instruments that you know second by second throughout the day what their prices are. Then you choose the mathematical parameters in the model to do two things. First is to match today's discount curve, essentially exactly, because there's no excuse to get it wrong, and you're toast if you do get it wrong. And the second thing is to match the predicted model prices, the theoretical prices of these calibration instruments, to their market prices. You do that either two ways. Either you can match them exactly, or if you have lots and lots of calibration instruments, you might try to match in some least square sense. Now, if you think about what's happening, and when, once, once, you, um, once you calibrate the model, then you can go ahead and use the model to find out what the price of the exotic is. And you think what's really going on is in some funny sense, what your arbitrage-free model will do is it's sort of interpolating the price of the exotic from the known prices of the vanilla instruments that you've calibrated to. And so that brings us to the big strategic decision, is should you use global calibration that is, if you take a bottle, calibrate it against lots and lots of instruments, usually a fairly complicated model, and once you calibrate it, use that calibrated model to price each instrument in your book. Or should you use local calibration, which is also called auto calibration, in which you take usually a much simpler interest rate model. You take a, an exotic instrument out of your book, you say, for this deal, what are the natural vanilla instruments that most resemble this deal, using some very simple criterion? Right? Once you calibrate just to those instruments, you go ahead and use the calibrated model to price the uh, exotic. Then you pull the next deal out of your book, you select a set of vanilla instruments which best resembles this exotic, calibrate the model, then go ahead and price exotic, and you work through your book that way. That's a local calibration. Um, Right now, it's all very vague, but in the second talk, that's exactly what we'll do. We'll take an exotic, say, what are the natural hedging instruments, excuse me, what are the natural instruments used for calibration, calibrate those instruments in price. Okay. So the first step in this is examine the risks, just in some rough qualitative manner, to say, what are, the, what are the risks that we have to handle 
in our pricing.